Today, let's talk about how to do this. And more importantly, let's talk about why you would even want to do that in the first place. So today we're going to be talking about melodic scales that you can play all the way up and down the neck. But first do me a huge favor and subscribe to this channel and like this video. The more people do that, the easier it is for me to spend a lot of time making these videos, which I love doing. And if you subscribe to this channel and you like this video, then stick around to the end of the video so you can find out how to win some free banjo strings. Anyway, let's talk about these melodic scale shapes. If you've seen my previous video on melodic style, then you probably know some melodic scale positions or maybe some melodic licks. But what I want to talk about today is having a comprehensive knowledge of the fretboard using melodic scales, which is going to give us a lot of choices when it comes to improvising or playing fiddle tunes or just moving across the neck. And there are a lot of different ways to play melodic scales, even more than the ones I'm going to show you today. But the patterns that I'm going to show you today are going to help you quickly move to any location on the fretboard, and it's going to work in just about any key. And the way these scale patterns are going to work is that I'm going to start with the lowest note possible, and I'm going to move up to the highest note within each position. And with each new position, we're going to reach higher up the fretboard until we're spanning the entire length of the neck. So here are the melodic shapes in G. And believe it or not, once you've learned these patterns in G, it's really not that hard to adapt them to C and D. For instance, if we want to play these shapes in C, all we have to do is change all of the F sharps to Fs, because the only difference between the key of G and the key of C is that G has an F sharp and C has an F natural. Similarly, if I want to play all of these shapes in the key of D, all I need to do is change all of the C's to C sharps, because the only difference between the key of G and the key of D is that G has a C and D has a C sharp. Now one concern you might have with these shapes is that it can be difficult to know what to do with them, because obviously just playing these scales up and down has some pretty limited musical value. But think about this, because of the tuning and limited range of the banjo, it can be really difficult to move from one octave to another using conventional melodic shapes or single string patterns. But scale shapes like these are one solution to that problem, and using these shapes I can move from opposite ends of the neck within a measure or two, or I can connect two different areas of the fretboard without having to make big leaps in the melody that I'm playing. So in order to practice this, I wrote a few exercises that are going to help you use these shapes to move around the fretboard in the keys of G, C, and D.
Okay, now if you've made it this far into the video, then you're probably wondering how you could win some free banjo strings. And assuming you've already subscribed to this channel and liked this video, all you have to do is comment below with who your favorite banjo player is that uses the melodic technique. And congratulations to John, who is the winner of last week's string giveaway. So if you want to be a winner like John, then make sure to like and subscribe and comment below. And if you want a PDF of all the tablature from this lesson, as well as all of my other lessons, as well as bonus practice tips and live streams, all kinds of content you can't find here on YouTube, then you should go to patreon.com slash Eli Gilbert Banjo. That's where I post everything that you can't find here on YouTube. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.